Closer to second. Just email. Ben, just email. Which was email? Ben, just email. Uh, well, I, I have. I you have, got him. I, I have his colleague. Right. Right. Okay, let's settle down. James and I want to swap some money. I'm going to call Randall. Oh, you can call Randall. With SDR people first. But randomly. Yeah. No, no, no. No, no. I'm not thinking. I don't care. <laughs> I've already lost interest. All right, Let's, we have very limited time, although I'll go into the regular town board meeting if we go over. Um, let's stand for the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Board Member Drake? Present. Board Member Nysel? Here. Board Member Steen? Here. Board Member Van Blarkham? Here. Supervisor Di Scalfani? Here. Joyce, please read the notice in the paper. Okay, this was posted in the Freeman and the website on March 23rd. The Town Board of the Town of Shandaken hereby calls for a public hearing on the proposed local law number two of 2022, short term rental law. Purpose of the meeting is to hear all comments for or against this action. Hearing will be held on Monday, April 4th, 2022 at 6 p.m., followed by our public hearing at 6.30 on the fee schedule for Local Law 2022. Preceding our regular monthly town board meeting at 7 p.m., 7209 State Route 28, Shandaken, New York. Questions may be e emailed to supervisorshandaken at gmail.com or call 845-688-7165. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. Um, this is the first public hearing, maybe the only, but we may do another one. Um, we are allowed to take away from this law, and if we add to it, then we would need another public hearing. Or if there isn't enough time for all the comments, we'll move it to another day. Uh, full disclosure, my name's Peter Disclafani. I own a restaurant and inn in Mount Trumper. Now this is a public hearing for the proposed short-term rental law, which allows rentals less than one month in residential dwellings, as not currently allowed under our town's code. There seems to be a lot of confusion over the New York State Uniform Fire and Safety Code. When crafting the law, initially I sent our lawyer the recommendations from the STR committee, which also required an inspection, but referred to the National Fire and Safety Code. Our lawyer, looking to keep us risk-free, said we must use New York codes, which happen to be derived from the national codes. To ensure this law protects the, towns, the town and residents legally, we searched their town code and found section 74, which we can change to. Take out the New York Uniform Fire and safety code and just put in the town of Shandake and fire and prevention building code. The inspections will be every three years, not annually. The inspections are for existing residential structures, not newly built structures. We're considering you existing residential structures. That's a whole different part of the code book than a new structure. They have much stricter requirements for new structures. Maybe not obviously, but totally different section of the code book. And it's not residential. The inspection is for safety. Inspections may be performed by any certified building safety inspector or certified code enforcement officer. Also removed from the original recommendations is a requirement to have a water test. And unless according to Ulster County, you have more than four rooms or 10 plus people staying in your place. These changes in the opinion of the town's council are not considered substantive and do not require a public hearing to take them out. Proposed law on page five 
on our proposed law on page five, section six, numbers one through five highlight what we always focused on and what were recommended by the committee for inspections. One, there will be one functioning smoke detector in each bedroom and at least one functioning smoke detector in at least one other room. One fo functioning fire extinguisher in the kitchen and one at each primary exit and at least one carbon monoxide detector. Two, the exterior doors shall be operational and all passageways to the exterior doors shall be clear and unobstructed. Electrical systems shall be serviceable with no visual defects or unsafe conditions. Four, all fireplaces, fireplace inserts, other fuel burning heaters and furnaces shall be vented and properly installed. Five, each bedroom shall have an exterior exit that opens directly to the outside or an emergency escape or egress window. I just found out that egress window means something specifically. I always thought it was just a way out. Now, we can take out egress window and just say emergency escape, as long as the window is big enough for someone to get out of. That's our biggest concern. We're concerned about places with too small of a window in them or have no window at all. Somebody makes a closet into a bedroom or somebody puts people in a basement without a window large enough to escape out of. That's all I have to say. We can start with comments. Okay. okay. Uh, so Carrie, you want to go second? You want? Well, who? I don't know. Let's take a vote on that. All right, Carrie's going to go first. Let me make sure the mic. Get it, I will move. Yeah. I wanted to um, see what Pete had to say first before I actually read my, uh, my speech, but I know that the clock's ticking, isn't it? We've got two minutes, so I've prepared something. I said it, yeah. Um, yeah. My name is Kerry Henderson, and my family and I live right on Main Street in downtown Phoenicia. Uh, we've been happily welcoming guests to our home for the past 12 years, even before Airbnb existed. In fact, the woman we purchased our home from, who some may know, Ann Nissen, had built a teeny shower room at the top of the stairs so she could welcome weekend hikers and skiers to town. STR income has allowed me and my family to contribute to this amazing community by offering our creative skills and starting several festivals and uh, putting on musical events and so forth. We're all part of an age-old tradition of hospitality in Shandaken, working together with hotels and motels and resorts to offer second-to-none experiences in nature to city-weary travelers. It's been a pleasure to send literally hundreds of guests to our local restaurants, cafes, watering holes, and specialty stores, as well as further contribute to our local economic ecosystem by hiring local contractors to work on our property. This has been a really long and complex process spanning several years, and it's been a pleasure to work with my fellow hosts on the Shandaken Home Sharing Association, and more recently with Angelo and his Shandaken STR owner group, which we've all joined as well, we've all come together. Thank you to Supervisor Di Sclafani and members of the board for steering us through this complex process, resulting in a fair short-term rental law which balances safety and welfare of our neighbourhoods with the ability of hosts to bring in vital income for their families. I'm looking forward to continuing to welcome good people to our town, as well as get a little bit of rest now. This law is finally coming to fruition. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Right under the wire. Very good. <laughs> Philip Monet? Yes. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Philip Monis. I've uh, been uh, in this area since 1980. I was a property owner. Prior to that, my family had a home up in High Mount since 1963. So this area is very much part of my uh, family, as I so call it. I love coming up here. I've been coming up here regularly. I've been working up here for many years. 
Uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this law and while you have all of these things here, you put regulations, we don't even know how many short-term homes are in this uh, town right now. You've come across with an arbitrary number of 300. We don't know. Nobody knows. To limit it at this point just doesn't make sense. It's, how can you do it? Uh, I'm gonna speak later about the uh, fee schedule as well. Um, but we do fulfill a need. I have people, guests that come, some are short term, some are long term. Okay, amidst the pandemic, obviously we've seen a number of uh, people transplanting themselves, just like every other community probably in this country. Okay, we have limitations. Uh, people like it, they like coming up here. I've had repeat guests continuously. Why? because they like the area, okay? I think you really should start to look back at your future zoning and a master plan on the town before you come across with these arbitrary laws. That's where the problem exists, and I know there is limited housing here. I fully understand it, okay? There was limited housing 40 years ago when I came up here. It doesn't get better. Population keeps on growing. We have 39 million people 140 miles away from here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miles Parker. Hi, my name is Miles Parker. I'm up in Big Indian across from the Full Moon Resort, uh, which I worked with Henry closely when I built my place. I wanted to make sure that when I built it, it served his interest as well. So we have a lot of guests from there to stay here. Uh, my family's been here for 150 years, five generations, and I've worked with very, very hard to stay here. And I'd be very upset if uh, a family like mine and a person who's built here and pay taxes for 150 years without sending kids to school couldn't have an application to run an Airbnb. And I'm still working at 72 years old. I require a cell phone, Zoom, and at least a landline that works more than 60% of the time. <laughs> so, uh, we all know that. Every time it rains. And this yeah. is Verizon. Yeah. Right. So, there's a lot of dollars moving through here. Sometimes communities subsidize businesses that bring this much money into the town. But we're not asking for that. So, I hope for a fair application process and fair fees. And uh, I hope that my children get to stay here. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Kristen Ryan. How's it going? Uh, Kristen Ryan, families from here. Uh, I was born and raised here. Uh, I think very much middle ground. I think there does need to be a protection of the community. I also do think the community needs SDRs. Um, first point is local law is not going to fix a macro housing crisis. Um, looking at long-term incentives to uh, or to incentivize long-term rentals should also be part of this plan. Um, there is also a misconception that I think has been thrown around about the profitability of an SDR. Calculating the profitability based on an annual percentage on 365 days when majority of traffic is for weekenders, um, two out of the seven days a week. Um, the fee model, if we can look for a percentage model, um, I think it, it makes those making more, earning more money, pay more to, to do it. Um, I think it hurts the local people who are trying to cover a little bit of cost and enjoy the house with their family and friends. Um, I've operated an SDR for now two years, right near town, um, and had very limited complaints actually no complaints from neighbors um, in doing so. Uh, other than that, um, good luck. Let's make it fair. I think Thank reasonable you. cost is, oh, is what we need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sundal, and a reminder, we're gonna have the public hearing on the rates. This is only on uh, short-term rental law number two. 
But he's going to ask probably at the end. I'll say, I did it for 15 minutes. I had so I can't really. Good evening, everyone. This is Sundar. Um, I've been operating in Airbnb since last year. Um, all my colleagues here pretty much covered everything that uh, I wanted to say. Um, I also thank you for your time, um, Mr. Pete. Uh, sure. Um, yeah, like, no. my, my concern was the um, New York uh, New York State Code as well as the high fees. So if we can, like everybody has, have a fair um, determination on what the license should be, um, you know, similar to what the nearby towns are also having, that would be good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anthony Yost. Really, we had the sign-up sheet for quite a while. Yeah, please. Yeah. Is that what name is the number? Yeah. Thank you. I'm just Thank standing you. up here to reiterate everything everyone else said so far um, about we need to have a fair process, transparent process, and also transparent about what you're going to do with the funds as it continues on, uh, because as it was stated a little bit earlier, it doesn't seem to me like anything in here really hits the point of any of the findings in the very first round of why all of this started. Like nothing in here is gonna change long-term rentals. All it's gonna do mainly as of now is just hurt STRs um, and hurt the local community and the economy around here, um, especially during COVID majority of businesses up here would have been closed if not for the large amount of Airbnbs that are here and the people that were able to come up and spend their money here. Um, yeah, so just looking for a fair process and wish everybody well. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Appleson. Thank you, Peter. No, we're awesome. Thank you. Uh, Scott, something that writes really small. Scott, <laughs> where's Scott? Scott, hair Madeira? I don't know. <laughs> All right, thank you, Scott. Uh, Steve Twerdak, but you didn't put if you had an STR or not. Uh, yeah, I do. You do, okay. All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, David Pollard. Come on, Dave. Waiting for you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Pillard. Um, I'm going to. Uh, I live in Shandaken. I'm going to speak in very kind of broad strokes. Um, my business has definitely benefited from having the STRs. Um, tourism is an extremely important part of our economy here, and if we don't have enough lodging, we really handicap ourselves. And then on the other hand, I'm a homeowner too, so I see the value of the regulations. And very broadly, I think there's two focuses. One, safety, make sure they're safe. And um, the other is that to have a mechanism, if there are issues with neighbors, that they can come to town hall and get it resolved, get it fixed. So um, I think it's also good to have a cap on the amount of STRs where the person does not live there full time. I'm, I think it's a more negative than a positive to have uh, a, a, a residence where there's no full time people there ever at all. And uh, the devil is in the details and God bless y'all for dealing with it. <laughs> Thank you. Dan Cohen. Hi, I'm Dan. Hi, Dan. Pleasure to speak to you guys today. Um, my wife and I are new in town. Uh, we do have an SDR. And uh, part of what attracted us to Shandaken is, or some of the things I'm hearing tonight, um, a sense of uh, community and a sense of sort of intersecting cultures that this town seems to embrace. And I think, as has been expressed by other people, having Airbnb, this is a new frontier. This is really a wave of the future. And in my thinking, it is, in a lot of ways, a gold mine for this town. Um, and I appreciate, in the conversations I've heard you guys have, that you acknowledge that, that you, you see that it is something that is part of 
not just now, but a historical fabric that this town is, has established. So just speaking for my wife and myself as, again, newbies in town, one of the things that we are very concerned with is that we are positive influences in the community and that we are taking care of our neighbors. And I can just speak to us and we're gonna do everything we can to be responsible members of this larger body. Um, and so in that sense, in a way, I am uh, in favor of a law uh, that has common sense uh, regulations um, and ways to enforce safety and so forth. Um, I guess the only concern I had, and it seems like you addressed it, is the, the wording in the law that we had to conform to the New York State Uniform Code, which you know our house is 130 years old, and I heard all of you talking about this is something that you did not want to exclude um, long-established members of the community, and so it sounds like that's been taken care of. So um, I just want to say that we're excited to be here, and, um, and I, I'm from a small town that went through a big tourism boom in the 70s and 80s in California, and so I've seen how it can go wrong, but I've also seen the benefits, and I think that's where, it, where we are right now with this. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to town. Jennifer Grimes. Jennifer Grimes, I have a vacation rentals management company uh, called Red Cottage Inc. And we manage over 60 properties in five counties, but primarily in Sullivan and Ulster County. So um, this obviously is, is pretty interesting to me because we have homeowners um, uh, for whom we manage their properties and we are on call and we have people in the vicinity of the homes, but I'm not sure where we fit within this this law here in terms of complying. So that's um, certainly something that we're um, keen to focus on. I, I have, uh, I do agree with the um, health and safety aspects of this and embrace that. Um, we were the first people to step up in the town of Calicoon when they did that over there and even helped them write their application. Um, so we're, we're, we all have the same goal, which is that people have a great and healthy and safe time um, when they visit. Um, I have another company, Country House Realty, which is a real estate uh, agency. And they're separate companies because real estate and hospitality are so different. Um, one is obviously tourism, one is real estate. The thought that um, if the goal were to have folks who have short-term rentals, to have them pivot and suddenly become long-term rentals, I don't see that happening. It's, a, it's kind of a, uh, you're shaking your head like that's not really the goal. I thought uh, creating extra housing was part of the, the goal here. Well, the goal is to have a, a short-term rental law. And hopefully, I mean, whatever we can do or the county and the state can do to bring in some housing, that would be great. Whatever we can do, we would do it. Got it, got it. Um, so at any rate, my, the analogy that I tend to use with regard to res the restriction of short-term rentals is if you have a business district and a problem with people speeding through, you don't restrict the cars, you give out tickets. And that there are tools at your disposal to penalize people, who, of all, whether they're rentals or home regular homeowners. And right. I would hope that those would be used rather than singling out the, the rentals. Right. Thanks okay. for your time. Thank you. Leslie Jenkins. Hello, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm Leslie Jenkins. I own a property with my partner on Olivera Road in Big Indian. And um, I agree with a lot of what's been said. Thank you so much for the compromises made so far. I think um, I, I'll just reiterate what others have said that that's appreciated because it seemed like it was gonna force a lot of people to just not be able to run. <laughs> so um, the only other thing I'd like to add is just to make a case and add a face to someone who's not here full time and that um, I consider, you know, we bought our property about four years ago. We love it dearly. I didn't have the privilege of growing up in this community, but I love it very much. I'm here as much as humanly possible, hopefully to be increased in the future. And, and really, really love it and consider it a home as well. Um, we rent out our place um, about four to six nights a month. 
We come up every single time in between because we're so careful with who we rent to. We like to check on everything. We've never had a complaint. And also, every dollar that we've made, we've, we've just put right back into the community with improvements to our property, hiring local <laughs> tradesmen um, to redo the roof, to do excavation. And it would just be a shame. I think it would actually... Um, we really enjoy hosting guests. We wouldn't sell our place if we weren't able to, but I think it would just be a negative for us and the community if we weren't allowed to do this. So thank you for the compromises and just keep in mind that every case is a little different. So thank you so much. Thank you. Vivian Welton. Welton. I own a STR on Plank Road, and um, I want to congratulate the board on coming this far. It's been a long haul, and uh, the STR committee did some really good groundwork. So I appreciate what you said today about changing, uh, the, taking out the uniform code requirement. Unfortunately, the Chapter 74 references right back to the uniform code, so I would suggest looking closely at the wording there. Uh, I meant through the whole thing, we can just take out those words, uniform code, and but, just... But Chapter 74, if you put that in, that's the same thing as putting in the uniform code. I just want to bring that to your attention. Um, otherwise, it's great. Um, there's one thing at the beginning uh, saying that um, after the law goes under effect, a person has 90 days to obtain an STR license. Well, I think in some cases it might take longer than 90 days for the process. So I'd say to apply for an STR license, maybe that would be more appropriate or to have a certain period between the time the law takes it to effect and the time a person applies. Does that make sense? Sure. Okay, because obtaining, you're not really responsible for when you're actually getting the license after you apply. That could take longer than 90 days. I mean, we out could, of, we could, we have to put a time there. We can't just say obtain a license and years go by. It's just the word obtain. Yeah, okay. Okay, if you want to have a time limit of application, yeah. I think that's in, in order. I think that would be helpful. Oh, and which, which number is that on? Right at the beginning. Um, it's a 3A1. Sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, and what? if you're taking out references to the code, to the uniform code, then that's going to come out of the penalties section as well. Is that correct? Am I understanding right? Because correct. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you. Liz Appleson. Hi, everybody. Thank you for doing all of this work. Uh, as, as somebody else said, the devil is in the details, and you guys are managing all of those details. Uh, I just wanted to put in a good word for STRs and what they do for this community. Um, I've been engaged in STRs in a couple of different ways for about six years now. Um, and uh, I also am employed, we, I, I wear many hats. We have our own business, we have an STR. I also work in the tourism industry in Chandakin. So I'm kind of straddling both worlds here. Um, and I'm very aware of how much um, impact all of these guests who are coming here to SDRs and to hotels and hotels are contributing to this <coughs> in ways that are really great. I mean, it's, I, I think that we may all agree that things have become a lot more vibrant, also a lot more traffic. That's true. But that's going to happen no matter what. Um, because we're a great place to be and people are really recognizing that. Um, 
and we have a really long history of um, tourism being a critical and important part of our economy, right? I mean, I've been in old Victorian houses here that have, still have numbers on the doors on the third floor because the people rented out their rooms. Um, this has been going on for forever. Um, and I'd like to see it go on forever. I think it is great to have some regulations around how short-term rentals operate because we want to protect everybody's safety as well as the sanctity of everyone's homes and well-being. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have Brian Towers. Hi folks, it's nice to see this kind of turnout here. Uh, I want to thank the town board for the effort that's been put forth on, on the preparation of this law. This has been a long and difficult process for everybody. We have two members of our board who sat through 16 months worth of discussion you know, about this. I think we're all grateful for the fact that, that you're making the effort to do this. I think it's important. Um, back in 2005, Shandaken passed a comprehensive plan, and part of that plan, the most, one of the most important parts of that plan was that we were looking to find ways to, to be able to do significant economic development here with minimal impacts on our community, and as it turns out, none of us were smart enough back then to have foreseen the phenomenon of, of home sharing and short-term rentals, but it turns out uh, accidentally or not, that seems to be that this phenomenon, which has contributed so much to the economic life of our town in these last six or seven years, this is really the fulfillment of, of our comp plan. So regulation is a good and necessary step. I appreciate the fact you're doing that. I think that um, when we discuss fees, when that, when that comes up, I think that the board needs to be especially sensitive to the fact that many of Shandaken's STR owner, uh, operators are, are this is our middle class people for whom this is a very important part of their economic survival. And uh, I, I myself, I have, a sm I have a place that I built, hand built beautiful little place on my property. I rent it out, but you know what? I don't make very much money from it. It's something that, like a lot of the other STR operators, you know, we do this because we like to do it. We, we sometimes we feel we need to do it, but um, I don't think that the fee structure should be something that should be an impediment to anybody trying to do this in our town. You know, it's been difficult enough historically for people to find ways to make a living here. This is a really good way, and uh, thank you for trying to make it happen. Thank you. Alan Dumas. Hello, my name is Alan Duma. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, and thank you for all the hard work. Um, I'm a short-term rental host in Highmount um, on Ulster Delamar Turnpike up near Bel Air and uh, a lot of hiking trails. Um, I spend about half my time here. I'm happy to share my home with others. Uh, my family moved to Hudson Valley over 250 years ago and moved to Ulster County 200 years ago. Uh, we settled in Olive, not Shandaken, and then in the 30s we made the big move down to Hurley, not Shandaken, but at one point in time, Shandaken was formed and Olive was formed in various parts of each other's town, so you could say I've been here for 250 years. Um, the point I'm trying to make is um, it's a great place to be, it's a great place to spend time. There's a reason all of us are here, it's because we, we love the area and we want to see the area prosper. And historically, for over 100 years, it's been filled with STRs, probably closer to 150 years. Um, as far as the regulations are concerned, I think it's basic um, public health and safety. I'm glad to see that the town is putting some regulations that make sense. You've covered a lot of good things, such as fire safety, parking, garbage, access, 911 access, um, um, smoke alarms, carbon monoxide detectors, what have you. It's very analogous to 10 NYC RR subpart 7-1, the temporary residence regulations were referred to earlier. Um, and I implore the town, because it looks like you already have, to make sure that there's no double permitting between the two um, codes. It looks like you've already got a uh, handle on that. There's about three sections where you just want to make sure you kind of check that. I have a 22 year background in public health before I went to private consulting, so I'm pretty familiar with those regulations. Um, I 
We'll speak more later to the fee schedule. Um, as most of us know, you're not going to make much money on a short-term rental. It's mostly going to pay your taxes, your utilities, so I'm keeping hopefully some improvements. So you can enjoy it for your family and so that you can share it with others. Um, I guess my time's up. Time's up, buddy. <laughs> no, sorry. I'm sorry. You did very well, though. Yes. Angelo DeSico, he might call later. I was here a half hour early. So, you know. Angelo DeSico. Is he late? He's coming back. He's coming back? Well, not soon enough. Robert, Robert Roosevelt. If Angelo comes, we'll slip him in. Angelo. Come on, Angelo. You got Angelo. 900 people waiting here. Oh, yeah. He could go right after you. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. What's your name? Robert Russell. Robert Russell. Yeah, my wife and I moved to Big Indian about two years ago. Um, yes. and absolutely love it up here. Uh, we're not short term rental owners right now. Um, might be in our future or not, but you know we wouldn't have been able to find Big Indian or Shandakin if it wasn't for actually being able to stay in a short-term rental. Uh, it gave us actually 30 days to really explore the area, fall in love with it, and, and make it sort of a weekend kind of exploration place and permanent home. Uh, one thing I just wanted to point out, it's not really um, too relevant, but you know, as you're setting a cap based on residency or not, obviously I think the intent is pure and to kind of manage and prioritize the residents here, but also as you have uh, you know, a large influx of people here locally, uh, just make sure to think about it long term as you know, population fluctuates both directions. So just make sure there's a long term consistent plan there. Um, and then also, um, if you were to reach that cap, just what would that approval process look like? Is it for first come, first serve? Is it it's first come, first serve, and you would okay. be on a waiting list. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I think it's great. So You're far. welcome. And now, Angelo. <laughs> the long-awaited Angelo. That. That's all right. Well, as soon as I step away. Of course. Wow. This uh, was not a bloodbath, Bradley. Can't it could be. be. <laughs> <laughs> um, still early. I'm going to keep this really short, and uh, I just want to thank the uh, you guys, the town board, for uh, working with us over the past uh, seems like six or seven months now. At this point, um, you've been nothing but um, reasonable, and uh, I've seen this shake out across municipalities in, in the Catskills and in the Hudson Valley, and uh, it could have just went a lot differently. So, um, appreciate it very much. Uh, look forward to working with you also in the future, and thank um, my dear friend Perry and, and everybody uh, in the short-term rental committee and across our Facebook group who um, who came here today. I really appreciate it. Thanks. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Roberta wants to speak. Is she preceding me on the list? I'm doing the list. Uh, Roberta is where? Oh, Roberta Super. Yeah, I'm just skipping around because I was getting the SDR people first, so. Now we'll get there. Yeah, there's a plan, see? <laughs> I think we're through with the ones that signed in as STR alone. So we'll go with Roberta. <laughs> you put no. Yeah. yeah, you put no. Hi, guys. Go sit down. How are you? Uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, I was one of the people who came to the meetings years ago. And I know it's been a long and arduous process, so I just want to say thank you. Um, I've lived here for 50 years, and STRs is my thing. It's my business. I have employees. It's their business. I have 20 people that work with me, not for me, but with me, gardeners, plowmen, garbage people. And it's really an important part of our lives that these continue to go so thank you for clarifying I was having a heart attack over the law because there's no way I could do all of that for 50 homes <laughs> it just wouldn't happen um, I just wanted to let you know that most of my homeowners are part-time owners they come up on weekends they come up once a month so for them a lot of them couldn't be here even though they wanted to they live three hours four hours away um, I wanted to let you know that most of my clients aren't against the regulations, they're for them, especially the safety regulations. They can't rent their home if they're not safe. So, um, lastly, I'd just like to say, I'm going to paraphrase the, the email that I wrote. 
that the history of our little town proves how much we have always depended on weekender city folk. Starting way back when my grandfather helped build the railroad to get them here. <laughs> um, I guess that's it. Everybody else pretty much summed up everything that's happened so far. So thank you very much for making some changes and clarifying and all the hard work you guys have done. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. John Horn? No? Thank you, John. We appreciate it. Uh, no, I mean that nicely. Mary Herman? Thank you, Mary. Stephen? My, Minan, my, Myron, Myron. Right. Sorry. You have to tell us. Hi, uh, Steve Myron. Uh, my wife and I live uh, about halfway up Mount Tremper, so we're in a pretty remote place, and there are maybe three Airbnbs nearby, equally remote. And about once a month, uh, or more. We have people show up at our place. Um, usually it's a Friday night. Quite often it's late. Um, often young people from the city, they're scared as hell. They've been, they've been looking around. <laughs> Google Maps doesn't quite cut it in the remote area, so please make a note of that. So what I'm gonna request, oh, and one time, um, just for, uh, for comedy's sake, we found somebody in our house, you know, they had slept in the bed, they had put oh, dirty God. dishes. Oh, we now lock our doors, we didn't used to have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they were your guests. <laughs> um, so the Woodstock STR law has a very clear requirement that, uh, you know, the signage needs to be very clear. The location needs to be communicated. <laughs> I looked through the draft. I didn't see that. Um, and I would like that put into the law. That's in our checklist, I think. Uh, and also, I would go a little further yeah. than Woodstock because uh, just writing it may not do it in we have it on our checklist. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's a checklist that everyone's required to have. Um, Maybe it's something we can put in the law. I don't know that that would. But well, yeah, we need we'll to look be able to, you know, I, in, of course. In, in one case, uh, I've encouraged the, the uh, STR owners to put up signs, and it hasn't happened yet. So I also need recourse. Okay. We actually, um, Thank you. Thank you. Linda Buck. Linda Beyer. Good evening. Um, my husband and I do not own a, a um, place for Airbnb. And I do understand that there are need for some regulations, but I do have a few concerns. One, I'm concerned about the fact that a person who doesn't live in the area can have a, an Airbnb for rent and they are not required to have someone who lives locally manage it. So when things go awry, like noise, parties, garbage, etc., neighbors complain. That's one concern. The next concern that I have relates to the safety factors, which I think are very important, and I understand that. What I don't understand is why the township doesn't have a requirement for those same safety measures for the people who rent full-time places. And I know of quite a few full-time rentals that are absolutely deplorable. My husband and I delivered food pantry food during the early days of the pandemic through Joyce, and many of the places that we delivered the food to were not fit for chickens to live in. So to me, that seems not a good idea. I'm also concerned about the fact that there are fees involved for having the short-term rental, and I'm wondering 
Well, where do those fees go to? First of all, are they legal for the township to get that money? One last concern is, <laughs> oh, <I'm wondering. laughs> sorry, That's all right. is, is that, um, well, actually, it's, the bell made me forget that I'm one. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, darn. Damn, we're all waiting. The, the okay. old Thank age you. factor that I have. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have the illustrious Art Christie. Illustrious, I said. <laughs> And I was asked by our live audience, somebody asked that we speak up a little bit on that microphone. But I think you're okay. Yeah. Good evening, town board. Good evening, neighbors. My name's Art Christie. I've been up here as a builder and contractor and real estate person for 40... Art, Art. Art please direct it to the for board, 40 please. years. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my concern is not too much about the law or the short-term rentals. My concern is that the people that are doing the short-term rentals are my neighbors. And I want to see them protected. I want to see them protected in many ways. Once you become a short-term rental and you're renting your house, it's no longer a single-family residence. It gets changed. If you look into your insurance and you have a rental now, you better upgrade your policy. Protect yourself. There's a reason why I got into looking at these short-term rentals in 2019. It was because I couldn't believe how the average rental for a month up here was between 1,000 and 1,300. And the short-term rentals came in and were renting for 1,000 to $1,500 a weekend. And I said, what in the blazes could make you go three times higher for a weekend? That's it, exactly. It's risk. It's risk. And, oh, well, well, it's risk. Our, it's our, risk. Face please, the board. Don't talk to the audience. Sorry. It's risk. And it's, and it's risk because when I did the survey for my clients, the people that were renting came from Long Island, New York City, Connecticut, New Jersey, and Massachusetts. None of them were really familiar with the way you live in the country. I've been called because they were told to clean out the ashes, they put them in a cardboard box, put them on a deck, burned a 10-foot hole, right? Put the barbecue grill next to the house, melted the siding. I mean, things like this. And these are things that have to be considered. Please, if I can have just one more minute, I'd like oh, you to. I'm sorry. Thank you. Anybody Thank you. Who has to me afterwards can come by. I have real numbers. All right, that's it on the list. Did you I want have to real have numbers too that didn't make it on the list? That's it with the list. Okay. Three major companies. Do the. Yeah. And do you have a list for the. Yes, there's only a few for that. Oh, I'm sorry, I got one more. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. I got one more here. Joseph Serp. Yeah, my name is Joseph Serp, and I just don't understand this thing at all. I own STR as a business, so there is a New York State law. If this doesn't rules. this doesn't concern you. You have a you have STR, a permit. That's this, a, right. But this you have a permit and a different permit. You went to a, or your predecessors went to a planning board meeting SCR, and you got a right? special, no. you got a special permit to do what you do. You're, you're already a registered business in town. So there is, okay, so for. You don't have to worry about this at all. So this, is it going to change for me or no? No, no change for so you at all. So I just copy that, that uh, uh, rule and laws for STR like mine to anybody else? Um, that's a long story. <laughs> I don't. It's it's that is a code. You know, I have to follow. I have to that's follow. a code you, you have to follow. I have to follow. But it's different than these are these are residential because they're residential homes. They're houses right. that are renting short term. And we don't have a code in our book for it, but we just created one to allow that. 
But New York State has a uh, basic, you know, rules and the laws yes. for short-term rentals businesses. So Some towns have, have business, adopted laws just like this. You could be against it. I, that's okay. I mean, no, I'm, some, I'm not against that. Okay. But, you know, the law and the rule are there. So why just not copy those rules and laws? And if you want to have an STR business, just, okay, follow the same thing. You have to follow, I have to follow, any other business has to follow. There's, well, there's, there's a whole story with that. <laughs> That takes more than three minutes. But thank you. All right, that's it for the list. All right, we're going to close this part of the meeting and open the STO, I mean, the fee schedule. There's a few people that want to speak. Do you want to speak after or just? Well, no, I mean, you could, you could speak now. And if what you're speaking about is the STRs, that's fine. It's all almost one. So right. yes, uh, boom, the, the woman in the back, yes. okay? Can I come up? Please. Yeah. Hi, I'm Lindsay Bauer. Um, Where do you? Please of, come to the mic and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Lindsay, I'm a local. I kind of have a house next to Miles Ashley Parker. My grandparents, great-grandparents came over here during World War II and bought a house up in Big Indian. And I'm kind of on both sides of the short-term rental community because I just wanted to share my story because not everyone that comes to this area is an investor. Um, I didn't inherit my house, but I kind of took it over um, with a bunch of tax nonsense involved. But um, I've inherited a lot of debt with it, and I was kind of looking into possibly getting into the short-term rental community and use it to possibly offset my expenses that I've now acquired. And I just want it to be known as the community. It's not just investors coming to the, to the community to raise the cost of living. It's local people as well which are just trying to maintain their homes. And I also wanted to just make a suggestion to you guys when you write the laws. Keep in mind that all of these properties are the same. My house is very rural. We can't even get internet. <laughs> so to expect somebody to get to my property within an hour when the road just washed out and was closed because of that flood, I just would like it to keep in a realistic time frame that an hour is probably not going to cut it, maybe two or three, depending on where the property is. And perhaps you guys should consider tiers for um, the fees that are involved because like I said not all properties are the same I'm a one solo income person with massives of student debt so taking a few hundred dollars does make a difference to somebody like me and it's not just a business and that's all music <laughs> it's also I have two quick questions. First question is, you mentioned egress. If you don't use the This would be for comments only right now, the oh, public oh, hearing, no questions. No questions. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Um, we had Alan. Um, woman in the back. Hi, my name is Hillary Leitner, and I'm just concerned about the wildlife, actually. We, we live in a forever wild, area that has so much forever wild and like wildlife is also something we need to talk about because when people come as short-term rentals, they really don't know where they are half the time. And um, sometimes people leave food on the decks and the bears come and then they return and return. And ultimately the DEP, I think, C. has the DEC has to put them down because they keep coming over and getting too close to humans. Um, people go into the creek not understanding it's the watershed and that there are creatures and algae and they jump in with too much um, suntan lotion and uh, mosquito repellent. So do you have something about the law that you want to say? I'm wondering if it could be put in somewhere that we have to We did. Be, we, be yeah, we, we put it, stuff about that in our... But it's, um, I don't think it was enough. It was in the letter. Yeah. But it just said, just be aware of the bear. But I, they, I don't think people really understand what, what the consequences are for these animals. People drive too fast down the road when they come. Just all the things that could 
ultimately hurt the wildlife. I yeah. think it's very important because we're in a very special place that most of us understand is very dear and unique. And I think that Absolutely. has to be considered. Okay. That's something. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Excuse me, please go to the microphone, state your name and address, please. Name and address. Adam Snyderman, 576 Oliveria Road. We've been here since the 60s. Um, I never wanted to give up our family homestead. So when I bought the house next door, the opportunity to actually turn that into a little bit of an income center and clean the property uh, was my interest. So um, when I came to this meeting, I was under the influence that the building codes were restrictive, that the fees were outrageous, and that this was going to be an argument. With literally 30 seconds, that was sorted out. Thank you, Kevin. So the main focus is to realize for me that if I'm renting my place, that's maybe two weekends a month. This isn't bringing in huge volume. This is trying to hedge some of the expenses to keep the properties clean and keep the place beautiful. And thank you for everyone's effort. Thank you. Karen. 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 Molly first. I'm sorry. This is much scarier than Facebook. What's, <laughs> Which, what's your name? <laughs> State your name. I have quite a voice on Facebook. That's fine. So I'm Molly. I live on Andrew Lane Road. What's your last name, Molly? Molly Holm. Oh, Molly uh, Holm. I've been I this, didn't see you with the yeah. mask off, you know? I've been in the same house since I was 10. I'm 51 now. And on Andrew Lane Road, there's at least three STRs um, that are non-owner occupied. It's a very strange feeling to uh, never see an owner there, to not know if I have a complaint, how I could even reach them. Um, across on um, Mount Pleasant Road or by the creek, there's maybe three more houses. So my biggest concern is the uh, non um, owner occupied and if we could maybe consider the hamlets too if there's a cap of 150 it might be like 140 or all in Mount Tremper so it's something to keep in mind about how much we're congesting um, an area it's kind of a lonely feeling to see all these empty houses with people just come and go you know it's not very it doesn't feel like a, a neighborhood so yeah thank you yeah thank, thank you, you. Um, Karen Oh, I thought Karen Wait, was going. Hank, first. Oh, Hank. I told me to cross you off. Next time. I cross you. Okay. My name is Hank Williams. I live in Woodland Valley, and uh, I'd like to speak a little bit about the SDR and what this gentleman spoke about just before and his concerns. In the code book, it has uh, a code for change of use. I live in a residential neighborhood. I bought a house there because I wanted to be residential. I wanted my I, the character of the neighborhood. Um, is something that everybody wants when they grow up as a child and, and they raise their children and their family. Uh, I live in a place where the properties are non-conforming and uh, some of them are 75 by 100, some are 100 by 100, most of them, and the houses are quite close together. And, you know, the STR community there's a way that they can coexist with the residents that live here for 40, 50, 100 years. Um, my concerns are that non-conforming properties are different because the new, when the code came out, our, our area is 1.5 acres Zone. per residential property. So if, the, if, if it wasn't non-conforming, it would be 1.5 acres, and if you had somebody renting an STR, it wouldn't be so bad if they were your neighbor, or even an R3, which is three acres, or R5. So I think the code should show at least uh, the communities like Hamlet, where the houses are close together, uh, commercial Hamlet, and residential, where they're non-conforming, pre-existing, that maybe you know, the, the numbers of STRs in those particular neighborhoods should be adjusted and looked at. Okay. Um, and and those, those are basically my biggest concerns. Um, and the fee schedule, I think it should be uh, equal for We're everybody. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Thank you. I got you. Hank, I got you on this one. Karen first. Karen Sharman. 
Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for all your work. Whoops, on this. Um, I wanted to address some of the penalties that are in the law for not complying. They seem really egregious to me and kind of mean-spirited. I mean, unless I miss something, are they all still there? The penalties are still there. Yep, that came straight from the lawyer's office. We looked them over. They seemed... I mean, there's First every every single day is an additional violation. Um, there's that's talk how of, the code book reads, as it is. I think it seems really unfriendly to me, though, and it seems unnecessary. So I would just okay. um, urge you guys to okay. take them out. Thanks. Okay. I mean, not say that you know well, people don't have to comply <laughs> with anything, but not threaten jail time, not threaten <laughs> thousands of dollars of fines. <laughs> So that's all I wanted to say. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All I have to say is that people, all they're talking about is money. Yeah. All I hear is that people Do your thing. Well, do the. I have to leave my house when my daughter is six months old Peter. because of the pandemic because our landlord is going to our home. Thank you. Thank you. Alan. State your name, Alan, please. My name's Alan Flegel. There you go. I live Be gentle with the microphone, please. please. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Dara Heinlein asked me to speak for her, but I'm speaking for both of us. She, there's a couple things. Uh, one is just people who live here, it's a way to get an income for people who really are struggling who, who live here. And um, when I moved here in 87, we did businesses. And at the beginning, people moved up here and they bought art from us to put in their houses. They're not doing that anymore. They're coming on Airbnb and they're buying hats or little things, sweaters and stuff like that. So times have changed. Uh, so there's the people that are, I'm concerned about that are getting extra income so they can afford to be here. And also the people that have small businesses here, uh, they really depend a lot on the people that come in and they're coming from Airbnb now. That's all, I just wanted to get uh, something easy. It used to be said when I moved here that there ain't no law west of show can. And that meant that we could live free, you know. I mean, there's some of that. But uh, I know you have to have some uh, laws, but uh, you got to take into consideration the people that live here that really need this. That's all. Thank you. State your, uh, we're talking about the SDR law. I know, I know that. Okay. You know that. You're Please state, state your name Dirk, Dirk, and address. Dirk Yael Bernhard. I'm a homeowner on Broad Street Hollow. Thank you. And um, affordable long-term rentals around here have become almost impossible. And I understand that it's largely out of need and not greed that people want to rent their homes out, Airbnb, and earn two or three times as much money per night as long-term rentals. And I just want to propose that instead of punishing those people for doing that, how about incentivizing them somehow to provide long-term homes instead, which are really needed in this area and would also boost the economy. What incentive can be offered to homeowners so that it's not such a huge advantage to choose Airbnb instead? I don't know what the answer is. I hope it's a helpful question. Because I'm really you. concerned about the housing shortage around here. I have a 19-year-old daughter who works full-time. She has a decent income, and she cannot afford to move out. She can't even consider a rental around here. It's just not affordable. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I just have one uh, comment. My name is Chuck Perez. I'm from Big Indian. I'm around the room here. And I see 
One person is a volunteer firefighter. Pete, thank you for your service. As a fire chief, I want to say that I can't tell you how many times we've responded to alarms where the wall is on fire, where the smoke detector is going off because they didn't uh, open the damper, or any number of things Toast. that happen on a, on a regular basis because people are not aware of the dangers of a wood stove or a fireplace. If you go to get insurance and you tell them that you have a wood stove or a fireplace, you cannot get insurance as a rental unit with a wood stove or a fireplace. I'm not saying all insurance companies, but there are insurance companies out there that will not insure you because of that reason. And I just want to uh, make it a point of saying as a fireman, we respond to these on a regular basis, and it's just a matter of time before it becomes tragic. Thank you. I've been to those same instances where people don't even have smoke detectors. Thank you. I own a housekeeping and property manage management company. Um, I'm sorry, I, I'm nervous. I'm not good at public speaking. <laughs> and where do you live? Um, I live in Polster County. So not Shandaker. Kerr Hoxton. Um, I manage two properties here in Shandaken. Um, I'm a Hudson Valley uh, native. I'm from Beacon, and I have witnessed what short-term rentals, unregulated short-term rentals will do to an area, and it's not good. Um, so I see the real importance of this, and um, I appreciate the conversations that everybody's having here on both ends. The fact that I live here, you know, I appreciate those who have these, uh, um, you know, want to protect their community but yet allowing others in and, and bringing money into the community. I've been able to start this business, employ other women, create a team, and also work with other you know, locals, artists, subcontractors, electricians, et cetera. So um, I think there's a, a middle ground here, and um, town of Rochester just passed a law last the end of last year. It's really great. Um, I think it'd be a really good reference. And of course, I'm happy to help in any way as well, answer any questions, make sure that the homes that I'm managing are, you know, have safety precautions, fire exit plans, all of those things. Because not only do we want to keep the guests safe, but our community um, and follow those guidelines. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Would anyone else like to speak on short-term rentals or the fees? Well, I have a list for the fees. Okay. Okay. What's your name? Gail Margulis, and I live on Woodland Valley Road. And I think I'm going to start with the Really, my main concern about this is that because we know somebody who who's out of town, doesn't come here, and owns, I think, five homes that they Airbnb, um, even more than two. When someone doesn't live here, and then they, they get something just for the purpose of short-term rental, to me, it just doesn't make sense. It's changing the tenor of the neighborhoods, and it's not even about the town making money, because, of course, people who live here and they have an STR, I understand that. But I really don't understand us becoming some kind of resort area. It's not really a resort area. We're a town, we have wildlife, we have beautiful little you know, restaurants and boutiques. We want everyone to be thriving, but we don't want it to be at the expense of those of us who live here, and I think it's really important. Thank you. All right, fee schedule. <laughs> okay, um, we're gonna start on the fee schedule list. I'll start. Um, and I just wanna let everybody know that it has been thought about. It's not just a you know arbitrary number. Um, we've we've spent a, a good amount of money setting this up, uh, conferring with legal. We've spent money airing this uh, for the 
the short-term rental committee for a couple of years. Uh, we'll, we'll be spending quite a bit of money on inspections. Uh, it, most of your places won't just have one inspection. It'll probably have two inspections. Uh, we will be revamping the computer system, trying to integrate the clerk's office, the assessor's office, and the building office, and keeping that safe as we are now, where you're able to pay online and do your um, permitting online, uh, your application online. <clears throat> So with that, um, Joyce, start off with... Yep, okay, so this is to speak about the fee schedule. We have uh, Philip Monet's. Hi, Matt. All right, back up here again. Um, Phil Monet's, uh, like I said, I do have to place up in high map. Um, I've been looking at these fees, and I know there is a cost that is incurred when you put together one of these short-term rental programs. Uh, I just cannot see, and I have looked high all over the place. I went to the town of Greenport, I've gone as far west as Canada, New York, and nowhere did I find somebody trying to charge uh, these numbers. There has to be a justification as to putting these numbers across. I know you can't put your fire department in there because that's a separate tax line item. All of these things are separate tax side items. How can we charge for this like that? Well, we have a police department. We yes, have an ambulance but squad. you also pay for that. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. Right. That's in our tax base. Absolutely. Okay. It has to be addressed in a better way. Okay. You have to assess it. You probably want to talk with your accountants to find out exactly where it's headed. It's not justified. Thank it's you. Just, it's simply not justified. Thank you. James Cobb. Good evening. My name is James Cope. I'm a um, resident here and have a short-term rental. Uh, I uh, would like to address the fees. Uh, everybody, well, everybody on the board, I think, in the uh, PU, Peter, are aware of the New York State guidelines that says that these types of fees should be cost recovery. And so I sat through the workshops and I have a little bit of a sense of what you're trying to do in terms of process. I think that's very good. I took the liberty of making it just to some kind of a quantifiable uh, perspective. Uh, if you add one and a half employees and a couple of computers, I'm guessing you would pay $70,000. That's probably generous. You probably wouldn't pay that much, but let's say you did. In terms of income, if you have 245 STRs, which is what recently uh, you, you calculated, the fee of $150, the application fee, would generate uh, 36 to 45,000. 45,000 being if you had 300 STRs. The license fee for 245 STRs would be around, would generate 140,000 to $160,000 in income. If 160 being if you had 300 STRs. The total income would be in the nature of 175 to $205,000. So that's, if your cost recovery is 70, and you're generating you know, $205,000, that's a 250% increase. And I, I just think that it's, it's not what the county recommends, it's not what the state recommends. We are the STR community, there's other guests in town, other businesses in town that don't pay this kind of fee. So I think it's really unfair and unethical to charge the rate that you're charging, when, which is some of the highest in the United States. There's Vail, Colorado, places like that. That's where you're at. I don't think we're, we're Vail, Colorado. So I respectfully submit that you really look at the fee as some people rent their places, as many have said today, for a couple of times a month, and they have to pay these fees. It's just not fair. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony Yost. Anthony Yost. <laughs> Hank Williams. Yeah, I was looking at the fee schedule, and I believe that the fee schedule, as the cap on the SDRs, should be equal for town residents as they are for non-town residents. 
Um, as far as the fee schedule and the amount it is, uh, I believe that whatever you charge is warranted based on the inspections and everything else that has to be done by the town to uh, make sure that they get their licenses properly. And, um, you know, I, I know these SDRs, some people own six of them, some people own seven. Um, and, and they get up to $700 a night. In Woodland Valley, there's a place that gets 675 a night, and that guy owns at least four SDRs. So I think it's unfair to even town residents to have people that are out of town uh, owning at least two, three, four, or five SDRs because then they're running a business. So the fee schedule should be what it is. And as everything else, these SDR people are gonna pass the cost on to the, uh, the person that rents the, uh, the residence for the night or the two nights a week or a month. Thank you. Linda Beyer. All right, you want to go off it? Take a rest. Jennifer Grimes. Jennifer Grimes. Vivian Welton. Well, I think Jamie Coke summarized this very well. Um, I think that um, pretty much we have a consensus for the most part that the fees should be lowered beyond what's printed here. Um, I don't have any objection to the, um, the tier structure because I think that somebody who's renting out one bedroom, it certainly should be a low fee. And someone with more bedrooms should maybe pay a little bit more because theoretically they're going to be charging more for their rental. But that's only fair if the fee schedule is lowered really, really far down so that the total is not up to $1,000 per rental. Um, because that is something that you have to pay at the beginning. You know, they can't just pay it off over time. So it's a, it's a large chunk of money and then people are really having to pay their real estate taxes, their utilities, all their, all their expenses that go into having a short-term rental is, is going to be eating into that as it goes. So um, that's pretty much all I have to say. I think. Thank, Thank you. you. Alan Dumas. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak. As I explained before, I spent about half my time here. I enjoy my time here. I mean, come here since I was a child in the 60s to learn how to ski at High Mountain Bel Air. With that in mind, the half the time I spend here, a lot of it's for work, a lot of it's for enjoying my home, and a lot of it's also for working at Bel Air Mountain. Uh, I hope to have my place long term for me to retire to and my family be able to enjoy. With that said, I'm concerned that I'm an Ulster County resident and not a town resident. There's a different fee schedule for non-residents, number one. Number two, I'm also concerned, as everyone else has talked about, just the level of the fees. <coughs> It should be a fees for service rendered, as was mentioned earlier, cost recovery, I believe. Um, if you look at these fees it, for a three bedroom home, it would be $800, $1,000, $1,200 for the three categories. If you were to calculate that out, so let's just see it 150 of each of those categories, it's you know $400,000 in fees, $200,000 would be about half those numbers. Once again, is that what it's gonna cost to operate the program, that would be a question that I would really ask the board to look into. The second item is, it was mentioned early in the meeting about um, not conflicting with temporary residence regulations. We look at the county fees for temporary residences. These fees are well in excess of that. The county fees for temporary residence that are regulated are 100, 150, 250, and $500. For $500, you could have a hotel that's greater than 100 rooms. We're looking at fees here where you may be charging a resident $800 for a three bedroom home or a you know, non-resident um, $1,200 for a three bedroom home. So it, it, there's, there's some concerns there as far as equitability, as far as what are you getting in return as far as that fee for service rendered. Obviously it's covered administrative costs, inspection costs, what have you. Obviously I think we all want to be able to enjoy our properties when we use them ourselves and allow other people to come and enjoy them. But I think the fee schedule needs to be equitable. Thank you very much. Art Christie. 
Art Christie? That's not the clock till I get there. No, I already started 10 minutes ago. Good evening, Ken. I'd like to talk about these fees and what an uncomfortable situation it is for our, for our neighbors. <coughs> there is more than going on that meets the eye here in the town of Shandake, and I have some quick uh, numbers here. And these are accurate numbers from last week. I'd like to present them. 40% uh, of the rain, of the, uh, the rentals in the United States by a company called Redfin. There's four million shortages for houses right now. Okay, and investors are buying the homes, all right? They're paying market value or above market value. Tricon is a company that's out of Canada. They bought 30,000 houses last year in the United States. Their stock went up 67% in revenue, and they want to buy another 800 houses a month in the United States, okay? The second one is Innovation Homes. They bought 80 thousand homes last year. All right, fee schedule, please. Do you have any thoughts on the fee schedule? Well, yeah. Because you got 55 ahead, seconds. Is, I'm sorry. That, that, I'm sorry. The, the fee schedules of these houses, the people are paying 40% more rent. 40% more rent, which enables these big guys to come in. They're backed by Goldman Sachs. They're backed by Chase Manhattan. Uh, Blackstone is the largest one in the, in the world. They're sponsored by a foreign country. I don't want to really say the name. But it's, it's getting to be where there's competition with these uh, short-term rentals. This isn't Shandaken. This is worldwide. I'm getting seven to 10 calls a month to sell houses, to sell houses. And when I ask them who they are, they say, well, we're a big corporation. And my wife and I say, I'm sorry, we don't do that. We keep it in town with local people. So. What I'm trying to get at real quick without using up any more of my time is that this is coming. This is coming next. Thank you, Art. 20 houses a month being sold in Shandaken. Thank you. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. All right. Um, let's attack the law. Are we ready? We'll just take out all the um, part about the fire code. We'll just write fire and safety everywhere. It says New York uniform. Or do we want to go page by page here and just go through the changes? Page by page. Okay, let's start with page one. Um, in purpose one, we'll, where it says residential structures, it's about three quarters of the way down that big paragraph. We'll write existing residential structures to make it more clear. Um, is there going to be another meeting? No. On, on this SDR? There is not. I don't think two minutes is a, enough time to get everything that you want to say out. What? Gentlemen in the back, yes? How are you not going to address the questions that people have if you couldn't ask a question if we ask a question to answer? Question. You have a question, sir? Yes. Okay. Oh. This is a public hearing, but, you know, questions, yeah. we've, we've been doing this for a couple of years. There, were, there was time for questions. Also, strictly speaking, well, what, what, in, in the, the town the board. Question, well, the question couldn't be in the last couple of years because you mentioned at the beginning of this meeting you're not going to use the word egress. How are you going to define what is uh, the proper size window or what is the proper whatever for safety if you're not going to use the terminology that's been on the books for... Well, it's still in the book. It's still in the book and the inspectors have to use their training, their certified inspectors from, from New York State and we have it in our book what it will be. Um, we don't put the, the size window it is in the law, and, but it says an escape window. The egress window means it has to be easy to push out. It's a strict terminology. E egress does not mean it has to be easy to push out. It means the size of the window by the, the, whether it's the first floor or second floor, how many square inches it has to be for people to get out. 
has nothing to do with push out or nothing to that effect. Right, okay. Um, and so now my second question okay. is if you say you're going to be inspecting, you've gone through three inspectors in three months. How you, how do, and, and you tried to bring back somebody that was already canned last year. How would you expect to do these inspections? How do you expect to get a qualified person in here? First of all, you can't keep them, they leave because you're not paying them. Wait, how are you gonna, how are you gonna inspect people's houses every three years? There, there are people who are calling us ready to come in and inspect. <laughs> Pretty bad answer because you're yeah, well, trying to bring back a guy. So, I mean, they, you know, he's in, he's, he's not a possibility. Qualified. He's qualified. He passed his he passed his exams for New York State. Whether we ever get him hired back, that's another question. But it, he's but, not but the right only now, person. Had, not the right, only person. Had so much time without an inspector, you're going to add this much more. We day. have an inspector right now. Thank you. Yes, miss. I have a question. No. 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 Procedurally, in the town board meeting, there is a section for questions on resolution. There is, there is, there is. Which is You're perhaps absolutely. the more appropriate time for questions. Probably. I'm just, no, we can just table since, since another. we're here. <laughs> Are, is, is that your wish? I'm honestly, with, with the feedback that we've gotten, I think it would be in our best interest to maybe table the adoption of the law, the fee structure, have another workshop where we can really have all the details, the language, the verbiage, okay. squared away. And that way when we come back, everybody can stand up and say, hey, good job, guys. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. All right, we'll put that off to another day. Um, how about... Well, that'll Tomorrow, depend, that'll depend on the. If we make sub substantive changes yeah. in the workshop, then we would require another public hearing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, you're adding anything. Right. If they're no. subtractive, we don't. If they're additive, we do. Right. Yeah. We're right. not going to add anything. And how about we have a workshop tomorrow? Is everybody up for that? And set a special town board meeting for the week from today, or do we want to put it off another month? I don't, I don't know that we can do that. I think we should put it off until the next month, month of town board meeting. Okay. All right. Well, but I, I mean, I'm in for tomorrow since I'm the one that brought it up. I'm not available tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I have to be there. Um, well, we don't have to do tomorrow. We yeah, could do pressure. We could do next Monday. Okay. So next Monday? Yeah. We'll have a workshop meeting. Have a workshop meeting. Workshop meeting is open to the public, but not public comment. Correct. Okay. And what's the date? Monday? Monday. I'll be out of town. You can't be? I'm not here next Monday. Okay, he can't be here. No, next week is next week's no good for Robert or myself, right? Okay. Robert, you're out. You you're out too. Tuesday? I'm out till Thursday the fourteenth. All all of next week. I can do any time this week, all of next week. You wanna do it this job. week? Um I can do the eighteenth or nineteenth. Eighteenth and nineteenth are good for me. 18th, 19th? Good. The, the 18th, the 18th, we have our first CAC meeting. So the 19th. The 19th. 19th. The 19th. Tom, Tom, can you be here? Tom, Thank can you, you be please, here? Please, please, please. Can you be here the 19th, Tom? Tuesday. We always, we always forget to ask our videographer. You know, we want to make sure they're going to be here. All our videos, folks, are on our YouTube channel. Um, Go to YouTube, good plug for the town. Ta uh, go to youtube.com and just type in town of Shandaken, one word. It's a good evening. It's nice. Bring popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't sleep at night, you know. Put you right out. Not this meeting, though. <laughs> uh, the 18th is going to be the CAC meeting. I got you scheduled for that. 19th. Right. So the 19th we're it's looking. supposed to be the next night also. So both nights you can work? It's a maybe. All right. It's a maybe. Yeah. It's a maybe. Okay. All right. It's not like it's going to be. It's all we could get. All right. So Tuesday the nineteenth. Call for a workshop, special meeting. Yeah, that makes sense. Six o'clock, seven o'clock. Six o'clock or six o'clock. Six o'clock. Should I let the lawyer go? Yes, please. Thank you. Gotcha. What's that? Thank you.
Thank you. Yeah, that'll give us time to iron this out. Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing. Can I uh, get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Town board meeting. Please exit if you're going to talk. Thank you. Hey, how are you? Good to see you again. Right. <laughs> so we're going to. Um, Thank you. Thanks, sir. Get him out, all right. All right, please exit if you're speaking, quiet if you're staying. Bill and Howard, thank you. So we're going to table those three, Peter. The three resolutions are going to be just tabled. Yes, Correct. those three. 60, 61, and 62. Gotcha. Make a motion we table 60, 61, and 62. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Uh, flag. All right, uh, can we stand for the pledge, please? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Board Member Drake. Present. Board Member Nysel. Still here. Board Member Yay. Board Member Steen. Here. Board Member Van Blarkham. Here. Supervisor Dee Scafani. Yes. Uh, I left my little notes in the office, but anyway. Uh, I make a motion we approve town board minutes from last month. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, and my financial report is down there too. I got it. Oh, good. I need that. Thank you. All right, financial report for March 2022. Revenues, ambulance, $16,865. Tax warrant, $400,000. Town clerk fees, easy pass, $48.45. Justice fees, $10,081. Building fees, $1,966. Dog license, $44. Zoning fees, $200. Ulster County sales tax, $46,024. Planning fees, $230.63. Higley unclassified payment of $346.89. Cell tower rental, $5,389.85. Police fees, $45. In lieu of taxes, $400. Pine Hill water warrant, $56,285. Phoenicia water tax warrant, $65,000. Phoenicia water unpaid Water, $17,502.88, Phoenicia Water. Kilb reimbursement, $2,596.08. Pine Hill Water, unpaid water bill, $16,020.30. Phoenicia Water, work done on theater, $50 for a grand total of $639,071.82. Okay, committee, communications, I'm sorry, Joyce. 
Okay, so uh, the next visit of the DMV bus is going to also bring representatives from Ulster County government. Uh, they're going to come each time our bus comes, and they'll be here at the town hall to help you with your county needs. It's going to be May 6th, Friday, which is the DMV bus is here. And it's going to be uh, a representative from each department of the Department of Social Services, Office for the Aging, Veteran Services, Offices of Employment and Training, and Office of Economic Development. So if you have any interest in that or if you want to see somebody, it's basically, they, they have, it's called Mobile County Government for people that can't get to Kingston or have trouble getting down there or seeing somebody. So they started this before COVID and obviously had to stop it, so they're going to start that up again. So they'll be here the first Friday of every month when the DMV bus is here also. And also on April 23rd and 24th, uh, there's going to be a firehouse open house to try to get um, volunteer fire people. And it's going to be at MF Whitney Hose from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So if anybody's interested, we have this on our website and our Facebook page. Uh, if you know anybody that would like to volunteer to be a fire person, that'd be great. Join the fire it. department. There you go. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, committee reports. Uh, ambulance, anybody here? Or? Yes. Kyle, all right. <clears throat> March 2022 report. Total calls received, 31. Mutual aid given, 3. 1 Hunter, 1 Olive, 1 Woodstock. Mutual aid received, 1. Multiple patient auto accident. Thankfully, call volume in March decreased a bit from our record-breaking January and February. On Wednesday, March 9th, at around 2.45 p.m., our responders were summoned to an incredibly challenging call involving a 15-passenger bus that was involved in a rollover motor vehicle accident in the area of Golf Course Road on Route 28. A total of 11 patients were evaluated, with six patients transported to hospitals with injuries. As a mass casualty incident of this scale far exceeds the abilities of our own town fire departments, police, and EMS's ability to mitigate on their lonesome, particular, particularly midday on a weekday, a number of agencies were called to this incident to assist in care and transport of the injured in accordance to our pre-planned response criteria with Ulster 911. Many thanks to Woodstock Fire Department, Ambulance, Olive First Aid, Hunter Area Ambulance, West Hurley Ambulance, Mobile Life Support, Diaz Ambulance, and Marbletown Ambulance all of which either responded to the scene, provided standby, or offered assistance during this call. It could have been much, much worse. Our new ambulance is back from its radio installation, and driver training is currently occurring on a daily basis. The final step in placing the ambulance in service, once driver training is completed, is a New York State Department of Health inspection. This can only occur once all medical equipment has been switched from the ambulance it is replacing. As taking our second ambulance out of service to do this uh, was risky while Bel Air remained open, it is anticipated that this will occur within the next week. COVID update. <clears throat> As of 4-2, there are three active cases of COVID in the town of Shandaken. Total cum cumulative cases in the town since the beginning of the pandemic have reached 287, with 283 recovered, up nearly 20 from last month. There is only one fatality accounted for in the town, and hopefully that number doesn't change. There are 134 active cases of COVID in Ulster County, slightly up from March, with cumulative cases in the county reaching 37,830. There are a total of 373 cumulative fatalities since the beginning of the pandemic in the county, with 37,323 individuals recovered. Stay safe out there. Richard muller -Liley, Chief of Department, Shindigan Ambulance. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, we don't have a building zoning person here to make a report. Police, Chad. Sure. So, uh, 640 complaints for the month with seven arrests and uh, 25 subdivisions. That's all I got. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Come on. I don't have any long drawn out process. You should Time's go up. You should Time's go up. Do you want to sing a song? <laughs> 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 I didn't even hear the ding, ding, ding. Uh, Phoenicia Water, Pine Hill Water. Rick. He's not in back. That's why you can't. That's see him. why I didn't oh, see him. Oh, Brian didn't save you. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
running okay right now. Nothing. I was just looking up to see if we could say that word. All right. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. Kyle, you want to speak on the museum? Sure. Uh, the Shandaken Historical Museum Report. Town of Shandaken Historical Museum's report for March 2022. Due to the inclement weather, our visitors were few, 23. We continue to reach a large group through our continuing posts on various Facebook group pages. Many questions are asked and answered on Facebook. Knowledge is shared and being preserved. More donations are being collected and visitors are now coming in with spring. Correspondence is growing in our emails and snail mail as well. We now have a greater presence online as well as at home. We would like to thank the town council and our town supervisor for all the support we are receiving. The museum is working closely with Kyle Steen to improve and develop a better museum for the future. Robert Drake has been sharing important resources to raise funds through grant writing. Repairs and improvements are continuing soon with Vinnie Sorbellini, one of which will be a hot water heater. Thank you to our town supervisor, Peter Discofani. We are planning a historical, historic Shandaken treasure hunt. The Northeast Metal Detecting Club will be here hoping to find historic relics. We at the Shandaken Historical Museum are looking for, looking for property owners to participate by allowing our friends to metal detect on their property. In turn, the Nor'easters will be making a donation to this museum collected from each member of their group. Thank you to my board. Each member of the museum board is spending time helping with the increase in work that a growing museum creates. We're looking forward to the many changes coming. Sincerely, Kathleen Myers, Director of Historian. Thanks, Kyle. Can I just say something Parks and Rec? Yes. Yeah. Um, so considering Parks and Rec, our committee chair, Gail Alba, and the parish park manager, Sam Awan, went down and did a cleanup last week to make it uh, nice and sparkly for the kids for the egg hunt coming up for Easter. Uh, with the warmer weather coming in, we're going to be doing a lot of work on the various parks. We have our first Parks and Rec meeting coming up sometime this month. We're just trying to settle on a date. Great. So moving forward with all that. Great. And if you could add it back to the agenda. <laughs> Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Oh. Oh, yeah. Where is that? And we're getting some uh, for summer camp. We're getting yeah, absolutely. emails yeah. back and forth. Yep. With yep. Starting to organize summer rec. Yep. We'll have news on that soon. Great. All right. Comments on resolutions. Anybody? Yes. Tina. Yeah, she was supposed to add those in. Do you know if she did? Don't know. Amy? She no didn't idea. give them to me. No. Okay. You're right. Good catch, Tina. Good, Good catch. catch. They may be added in there, because these seem a little, but they may not. No, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah those. Anybody else? I want that. Okay, <laughs> sure. And 60, since you did not pass the wall 2, uh, we've tabled all we've those. Tabled we tabled all it. All, all of them? Yeah. Yes. 60, 61, and 62. Thank you. Oh. Yes, Rob. Yes. Yes, and you know we we spoke with the legal before we put it out to. I wanted to mention that um, it is a two-year term. All of them 
are on a two-year term. That's how they do CACs. They're not like um, the ZBA or the planning board where they're staggered terms. They're all just one two-year term. Ends on December 31st of 2023. Oh, we have to add that then. Um, can I ask the, the X is on the resolution? I assume that's for somebody to be determined later. We have a name. Oh, you have a name? Just done. Okay. Uh, lastly, it's a seven member board. We've got nine names. Yeah, they said also it could be seven, 11, 13. But the law you pass is seven. Mm. Uh, Not the law. Yeah. Seven. Okay. We'll we'll stop at seven. Okay. We can make two alternates, right? Yes, yeah. we can make two alternates. So then, to December thirty first, two thousand twenty four. So it'll be added on this. Twenty three. Twenty three. Are those two year no, term? Twenty three. Twenty three is. Twenty three. It's not a two year it, term. That's a two year. Oh, term. Oh, it's twenty three. I got you. This kind year, of like, this year doesn't yeah. count. Yeah. Year and a half, but. I know. Yeah. Uh, Mary, you want to be an alternate? No, I want to be in that. You're going to be in. I'll, I'll make MJ an alternate, and I'll make Mike Chelfie Chelfi an alternate. But really, as many people as want can be here for those meetings. Uh, you, Everybody and anybody's input is important. Yes, Chuck. With regards to that resolution, and I may be a day late, but the law was passed last week, and I understand the need to uh, put people on the board. And this isn't to discredit anybody that has been named or uh, put forward. Um, can you just tell me what is the purpose of that board to review? Uh, their, their main purpose is to try and, uh, it's a climate smart committee also, they're going to find green initiatives for us to uh, handle and take care of. They're going to be working with Ulster County and New York State, like NYSERDA. They're going to be finding ways for us to get free solar panels to put on the building. Mainly, that's, that's what we're going to do. They will, they will find ways to, to get points to get grants for us to do that many is, of those. That is, I don't have any problem with that, and, and thank you for the initiative right. going forward. Thank you. Um, sure. When the Conservation Advisory Council was initially proposed 20 years ago, yep. um, I mean, I, I've, I've seen a lot of people in this town hall. Tonight was packed. Yep. The only time I've seen it exceed that was when we were discussing the Conservation Advisory Council in the comprehensive plan, and it drew out so many people opposed to it that we had to move the venue to Bel Air. I just hope we're not looking to impose on people's rights. No po impositions at all. We have enough state land and city land. No, yeah. Any other comments on resolutions? Can I make a comment on resolution 61? We tabled it. It's, it's tabled. Um, it's tabled. Comment next month. Next month. We have to wait till public comments. Could could you call me? <laughs> or wait till public comment? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, is does anybody else want to talk about resolutions? I do, but I'll wait for public comment. Okay, thank you. Besides for Hank. You have a motion. I have a motion to uh, move Donna Lemoyne from building inspector to code enforcement officer. She is in classes and she's talking about moving to full time. We haven't signed anything yet, but she wants to be our code enforcement officer. I'll have a second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Let's start resolutions. Okay. Kevin? Resolution 59, 2022, resolution to pay all bills, whereas the Department of Audit and Control require town boards to sign and inspect all vouchers coming into the town for payment to number and total amounts from each fund. Therefore, be it resolved that the town board authorize the following vouchers paid. General, $428,624.60. Highway, $168,875.49. Phoenicia Water, $10,795.96. Pine Hill Water, 
$52,584.88. Phoenicia Lights, $2,794.58. Chichester Lights, $197.63. Pine Hill Lights, $874.26 for a total of $664,747.40. And move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Blarka? Yes. Supervisor Di Stefani? Yes. Can I make a suggestion that we would add that if you get those figures from Amy that we could put them in these minutes or just add them to next month's minutes? However you want to do it. Yeah. We'll just do it next month. Yeah. All right. Okay. Resolution number 63, 2022. Point Conservation Advisory Member. Whereas the Town of Shendaken Town Board adopted Local Law Number 1, 2022, of the Town of Shendaken on March 7, 2022, to create the Conservation Advisory Council. Whereas under Article 20 of the Town Law, the Town Board shall designate all appointed officers and employees of the Town. Therefore, be it resolved that the following personnel be appointed to the Shendaken Town Conservation Advisory Council Bethia Waterman, Bruce Barry, John Michielotti, Robert Cruikshank, Mary Herman, Angel Molina, Achie Jindel, with alternates of MJ Rice and Michael Chaffee. Be it further resolved, the members of the council, including ex officio members, shall receive no compensation for their services as members thereof, but may be reimbursed for reasonable and necessary expenses incurred in the performance of their duties within the appropriations made available, therefore. I move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Barca? Yes. Supervisor Di Scalfani? Yes. Resolution 6422, Town Clerk Deputy. Whereas under Section 20 of the Town Law, Town Board shall designate all appointed officers and employees of the town. Therefore, be it resolved that the following personnel be hired as part time Deputy Town Clerk Angela Galdino. Galindo at $14 per hour, 14 hours per week not to exceed $9,320 for the fiscal year 2022, and I move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Blarkham? Yes. Supervisor Deuce Klein? Yes. Resolution 65, 2022. Resolution supporting 10th Annual Women's Woodstock Cycling Grand Prix. Whereas the town of Shandaken fully supports recreational tours and ventures throughout the town and the region as beneficial economic activities, whereas the town has in the past supported an annual bicycle race to be held on Sunday, May 1st, 2022, and whereas said race will consist of a course originating from Woodstock, New York, through and along Route 212, Route 28, Plank Road, and Wittenberg Road in Mount Tremper, New York, through and including Route 28, Bridge Street, and Plank Road in Phoenicia, and concluding in Woodstock, New York, Therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Shandaken supports this event, known as the Women's Woodstock Cycling Grand Prix, extends any courtesy as may be necessary to provide for the health, safety, and welfare, welfare of the participants, visitors, and residents alike, and move its adoption. Second. Okay, Kyle in there. Sneak Kyle in on that one. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Blarkham? Yes. Supervisor Di Scapani? Yes. Resolution number 66, 2022. Parkinson's Awareness Month Proclamation. Whereas Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurological movement disorder of the central nervous system, which has a unique impact on each patient, and whereas according to the Parkinson's Action Network, the Parkinson's Disease Foundation, the American Parkinson's Disease Association, and the National Institutes of Health, there are over one million Americans diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and whereas symptoms include slowness, tremor, difficulty with balance and speaking, rigidity, cognitive and memory problems, and whereas although new medicines and therapies may enhance life for some time for people with Parkinson's, more work is needed for a cure, and whereas increased education and research are needed to help find more effective treatments with fewer side effects and ultimately a cure for Parkinson's disease, and whereas a multidisciplinary approach to Parkinson's disease care includes local wellness support and caregiver groups, and Whereas April has been proclaimed as Worldwide Parkinson's Awareness Month for all to recognize the need for more research and help in dealing with the devastating effects of Parkinson's disease. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Shandaken Town Board does hereby proclaim April 2022 as Parkinson's Awareness Month in the Town of Shandaken and move its adoption. Second. 
Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Blarka? Yes. Supervisor Duce Yes. All right. Resolution 6722, resolution to confirm participation in the process of developing a nomination to extend the Catsco Mountain Scenic Byway. Whereas the Catsco Mountain Scenic Byway CMSB consisting of portions of State Route 28, 214, and 42 spanning 58 miles and involving six municipalities was officially designated by New York State and signed into law by the Governor in 2015. And whereas the Central Catskills Collaborative comprised of representatives from each involved municipality have worked together successfully to achieve the byway's designation and have promoted the scenic byway in the region through numerous tourism and partnership efforts. And whereas the CMSB cor Corridor Management Plan identifies the intrinsic value that compromised the special designation and includes recommendations to protect and enhance the historic, scenic, recreational, and cultural resources along the CMSB for economic benefit. And whereas the CMSB, along with the regional stakeholders, have worked to strengthen cooperation in the scenic byway system in the Catskill region. And whereas the towns of Roxbury, Hurley, and Middletown, and the village of Margaretville have adopted resolutions to extend the scenic byway within their municipal jurisdictions, and financial support has been secured to pursue the planning process to meet state guidelines for a nomination to extend the scenic byway. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Shandaken supports extension of the CMSB and will through its collaborative representatives advise and assist in the revision of the CMSB Corridor Management Plan, which will be put forth for full nomination to extend and the CMSB on Route 30 in the towns of Roxbury and Middletown and the village of Margaretville and on Route 28 in the town of Hurley and move its adoption. Second. Board Member Drake? Yes. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member, <laughs> Board Member Steen? In. Yes. Board Member Van Blarka? Yes. Supervisor Di Scafani? Yes. Oh. Well, you didn't sound so sure. All right, open public comments. Uh, Hank, you have something to say? Please. Uh, I'd like to comment on Local Law 61. SDR um, regulations. Yep. Um, two minutes really wasn't enough time to kind of like say what you have to say about it and keep your mind focused in the right place. But it seems to me that the way the law is written, it says that there's no cap for town residents. And there's 150 cap for non residents. Um, that leads me to believe that there's no cap in the town. Uh, I, I believe there's like, what, 3,500 taxable properties in the town of Shandaken, which of that 2,100 or 2,200 are residential properties. All the rest are bars, restaurants, laundromats, and what have you. Yep. Uh, I, I think it's in the town's best interest to have a cap on the amount of SDRs that are going to be in this town. Uh, and that they should be treated equally, meaning that if a resident owns uh, an SDR and it's on their property where they reside, like a, a refurbished garage or whatever, that they should be able to operate that and, and buy or own one more SDR there. And I believe, I, I personally believe that um, non-residents should only be able to operate one SDR. They can own as many properties as they want in the town of Shandaken, but in the best interest of the town, I believe that they should only be allowed one SDR operation. Because, as you see, this place was loaded. As soon as there was a town board meeting, everybody left. So that the only interest is in, I shouldn't say their only interest, but their primary interest is uh, the operation of their business, which is an SDR. And it truly is a business. And, and it's not fair to the people of this town, the residents that own hotels, motels, bed and breakfasts. They have to adhere to all the health uh, codes that there are, all the uh, also county uh, regulations regarding motels, hotels, and every, uh, not every, uh, but bed and breakfast. And I just think that that should be looked at a little you better go back into some sort of uh, workshop that you should take that into consideration. Uh, along with what I had said before that uh, non-conforming pre-existing properties are clustered together and they don't have the luxury of 
of having that separation as, as one R one point five or R three right. or R five. Right. So those are those are the things that I'm concerned about. Okay. And I couldn't get that out in two minutes. I was okay. getting flustered. I guess. It's kind of hot in here. I was getting red. Well, we hear you. you know? We hear you. So, and I want to thank you for the work that you put into this. Thank you. I really do. I mean, this has been going on for about three or four years. Uh, it seems like 30. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you. You did a lot of work, too, Hank. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Joe. So I'm going to say one more time that uh, we have laws, we have rules for short term hotels, motels, you know, we have uh, better measures. Yes. So it would be much easier to apply it. And uh, instead of have a list who can have a short term or cannot, if you don't mm -hmm. follow these rules, laws, then you cannot have it. If you provide proof that you do whatever you're supposed to do, required by state, county, and town, then you're going to have it. And it's going to eliminate by itself. Yep. Thank you, Joe. Um, one more there, thing, one more okay, okay, I sure, sure, sure. I just want to ask you. I called uh, your office, you can call me back, so I just want to ask you what's this. If you can see what's there. In the that's, a, that's a road, that's a highway with what, some what dust on that? it. Dust. Yes. Do you see what's the, on the front of the desk? I, I'm not going to, I'm not meaning you any disrespect, no, but do we see? don't do highway. Hey, here he is in the back. That, okay. that guy back there, he does highway. Do you financing? I don't. No, he has the financing for highway. <laughs> but this isn't a highway meeting. <laughs> that, Chuck, can we move on? No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You know, when, uh, when, the, when the room was packed, there was a lot of youth here. Could you get by the microphone right. so the home audience can hear you? I'm sure they want to hear you. When the room was packed, there appeared to be a lot more youth in, in, the, in the facility. I, I got to believe that that's probably uh, a fair estimate as to the youth overall within the community. Unfortunately, and this has nothing to do with me personally, but with regards to the STR housing problem, what may be a bigger problem is the long-term rentals. And this may be the opportunity to open up that discussion it, and try to find a solution to that problem. Because if youth can't live here and afford to live here, again, as a fireman, we don't have enough volunteers to provide the service that we're expected to. Right. And it's only getting worse yep. as the years go by. It sure is. Okay. So again, I'm not, I'm not saying anything about the, the law with regards to it as a uh, entity, but I think it opens up the discussion for long-term rentals yep. at this time. Yeah. Thank you. We've been in discussion, many of us have, with uh, you know, the residents around town, people who are willing and willing to offer us some help. As a town, as a town board, we obviously, you know, we don't have like a couple hundred, three, four hundred thousand dollars to, to buy a piece of property and build housing. We hope to find ways to uh, foster that, but we're I'm still not looking. Sure to stand off a wound, but we had, we 
had some housing in the, in the community. We that did, it, yes, it's unfortunate. Okay. Um, and that needs so to it's get, possible. That it's possible, and it needs to get looked into, and it needs to be certainly investigated. Yeah. Mr. Wodinski? Departments, you have to go through uh, architecture, sewage, water. Then, once you've spent whatever that cost, you have to go in front of the planning board for a special permit. Now, maybe you'll get it, maybe you won't. Maybe what we have to do is change that, make it where you could get a special permit, then go through all those costs, bring it in front of the planning board, build to their specs. But right now, who's going to bother? I mean, I'll be honest, I bought a property to do that. There's no reason. So how are you going to get more long-term rentals? I only have long-term rentals for town people. They all work in town, whether it's the dining or the brewery. I gladly build more, but it doesn't, you know, the town, they, well, I understand this whole STR thing, and I, I don't care either way. But if you want long-term rentals, there's a way to get it. You know, it's very hard in this town because you have the DP, you have the... the well, uh, just the, the guys with the sewer, the septic. So you expect people to spend, and it's not even the dollars. I mean, you have to spend hours and months and to go and get these permits or show that you can get these permits before you get a special permit. Then you go in front. And then, you know, it's a 50-50 crapshoot. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah, so now, they're, they're usually pretty pretty good at the planning why board. Would, why would anybody spend what they have to spend in time and money yep. to build you yep. these apartments? Yep. So it's, it's like, I don't know, it's like a fairy tale you're trying to make them. In. But there is ways, and again, you don't have to buy the land, but there's plenty of people here that own it or are willing to build them. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Sir. Isaac Schweiger from Pine Hill. Hello. I uh, said I would be back to check on the status of a, a debris pile uh, that is still not cleaned up in town. It's been nine months that we've been asking about it. So it's not done yet. I'd like to know what's been done as far as have fines been levied against the property owner for failing to clean it up and abide by the code, number one. Uh, but then I'd also like to kind of dovetail that into the bigger issue that everyone's talking about, that's availability of housing. There is a substantial percentage of housing in Pine Hill that is uninhabitable because it's so run down, because there's been no code enforcement, because you know these places need to either be leveled and so we can actually move those lots back into the productive housing stock of the community, um, or we just can see it get worse and worse and worse, and the community is going to be blighted and no one's going to want it to bring new housing stock in. So it is, it's all these issues do kind of dovetail in together. Um, but I would like the response as to what has happened since I was last uh, before the board with regard to this one property that we've been asking for, you know, it's, it's, it's been June since it was leveled. Chuck and I were both there fighting that fire. Um, and it's just been a smoldering eyesore ever since. Eric, you have any update? It is because it's got my burger and garbage that I threw in for the drive through on my way through a month ago. Okay. So, I mean, so what I want to know, has there been a fine levy? There hasn't been a fine levy because when we issued the violation, back when Sarah was with us, uh, he came in, he spoke with Sarah, she let it go because he said he was going to start like within the week, which was within the time period. As soon as he started, she pulled it aside and put it on a pause. So she's since left us and we now have a new enforcement officer. She's taken a little while to get up to speed, but we will get on it. Well, this is the third 
third time I've addressed the board on this. It's just one single issue. It's just yeah. really, and it's not a, a huge issue, but it's huge for the people that live there. And it really does affect the psychology. Every person has to drive by it. And frankly, if it takes a year to get a job this small taken care of, there are bigger problems than just this one job. Yeah. Thank you. And, and here's, here's the particular issue. Can the town actually clean that mess up and add a cost to its taxes? So it, we, it, it was something we were investigating, and we thought that it was going to be taken care of. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and, but it, I will be. And you know it's not taken care of. I, I obviously. I watch this on YouTube like once a month. Okay. So maybe the town could uh, get a dumpster, fill it up, get rid of the trash, and, 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 and we, we really, We really can't just go in and touch private property. We have to issue the, the yeah. proper violations and go through the channels uh, with. Uh, yes, well, we have to follow up on it and then send, go to court and. Correct me if I'm mistaken on this, but we have reposted a position in the building department, the Correct. building inspection department, Correct. at a slightly higher rate of pay. Correct. Because both in this issue and to the long tail that you spoke to, clearly our ability to enforce these things needs to be approved. And that really means that we need to have a solidified, permanent, professional building department that we have had at times. but. Yeah, I've, it's not matured. I mean, we, we, know, we need I've, to have that. I put out so. for a, a higher yeah. pay. Um, but how about issue the fine? Because frankly, if there's no fine, then it's. Then we issued the violation. We will reissue the violation, and it goes to court. We don't issue fines. So we yeah. bring them to court, because if not, then your codes become arbitrary and they become optional, and people don't have to follow them because there would be no enforcement. And that's exactly. not a town that any of us wants to live. No, it is certainly is not. Thank you. Well, are there any more comments? Any Smith Park? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about the crater, the crevasse that yeah. has developed? Yeah. Yeah, so the highway is going to be going in. Like I said, the Parks and Rec update, we're going in for park maintenance over the next month while things are slow. So that'll all be be uh, covered. We're going in for park maintenance over the next month while things are slow. So that'll all be be uh, cleaned so up. So before the summer. Yeah, 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 of course. It'll be that'll all be filled in the same as it was last year after the December flood. You know, it's the same same issue. All that water came over from Birch Creek Road and and dumped across 28 into the park. So. Standing maintenance issue. Yeah. Of course, I'm not a But I, it, I had a meeting with uh, with Kara, and all the information was passed on to Kenny and Eric. So they'll be they'll be going around and fixing the parks individually. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I want to say an extra thank you to all the members who joined the Conservation Advisory Council. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your volunteer work. And thank you to all the volunteers in our town, Planning Board, ZBA. Um, I would like to adjourn in the memory of uh, Bill Sleepy Rismo and Sally Calderiz. Thank you. I make the motion. Close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.